Hey everyone, welcome to a quick review of F1 2022. If you've never played a game in the F1 series to date, this review may be missing key details for you as I'll be referencing back to earlier games in the series to see where this entry has improved. If you want a good idea of how F1 2022 is, buy any F1 game from 2018 on and later, and that's pretty much your F1 2022, which should be no hassle. But let's get down to specifics. Controls wise, the game feels exactly the same as it has since 2015, with solid wheel support and controller needing a few tweaks just to feel right. If you want to know what I do, I like my steering saturation at 30 and my real rotation at 300 degrees, while my steering wheel control setup stays at default. Visually the game is hardly a step up from the past few entries, but the ray tracing effects really do look better here, and if you have a ray tracing capable card and are willing to put DLSS or AMD's fidelity mode on, 60fps gameplay is more than likely an option for your system. Non-high-end users need not despair though, as F1 2022 is one of the best running games in the entire series, with ray tracing off of course, easily smashing my previous frame rate in F1 2021 in ultra settings. And speaking of optimization, it's a minor thing, but it's something everyone's worried about lately. The game size is sliced nearly in half from F1 2021. Frankly, I have no idea how they did it with the addition of the new supercars added to the game as well as a new track, but I'll take it. Speaking of supercars, let's talk about the content of the game. The career mode and in general the modes are what you've come to expect, F1 2022 and F2 2022, with the addition of supercars with their own mode and leaderboards. And frankly, they just don't do too much for me. They drive just fine, but the game's about formula cars, and I would have much preferred a return of the legendary cars from years past. Or why not both? They don't need to add more cars and modes for the legendary cars, but why not just include them and make the overall package that much better? The career modes are at least good fun. The jump in and drive style of the driver career mode is what you come to expect, as is the build your own team. Although with every entry, the build your own team career feels a bit more involved which is immersive, but I can see why more and more people would be turned away from it. I mean, just look at all this shit, I just want to race. On the note of these overcomplications is where the heavy influence of F1 2021's design nips it in the butt. This is just too much. It's simply too many menus and submenus. I mean, at least you don't have to do the stupid racing style thing like in the menus in F1 2021, but still, this is a huge eyesore. And please, for everyone's sake, in 2023, just gray out the menus that you can't access during the race and tell me when I can access them again. Going through every single nook and cranny of the game's menus to try and change the difficulty only to find out you can't actually change it while you're in a session and you have to be in the workstation between sessions in the career mode once I was already on my third race was a huge annoyance. Well, while we're talking about racing, let's talk about actually driving. It has to be said that the game really doesn't feel all that different from F1 2021. That's fine though, I mean, that's more or less what I was expecting, although it does have to be said that the slew of new assists and how raw the cars feel once they're all turned off is a nice change of pace. It makes me think that turning off all the assists in F1 2021 wasn't actually turning off all the assists for you, so if you want more of a challenge, you can definitely have it. And that said though, the cars do still feel very floaty and not really like a real car though. Sound is largely the same too, a puncher soundtrack is nice, but just about everything else is exactly the same. Well of course other than your race engineer, who's voiced by a different guy this time. Still turn them off though. Oh mate, DRS has been enabled. I know this is the 52nd time, but let me just explain what DRS does. <sighs> it's still a high quality package at the end of the day though, and there's not too much room for improvement, although it is there. And that kind of sums up F1 2022 really. It's a tough series to improve, but they definitely can. Re-adding modes and cars from years past would be a huge boost, like the old scenario modes and legendary vehicles, to name a few. Just really make a game that can be as good as it can possibly be. It's a shame that every time I open up one of these F1 games, other than 2013, I have a good time, but I'm just left feeling that it's not quite as great an experience as it could have been. That said, if you've taken a break from the F1 series and are looking to get back into it, now it's still a good time. F1 2022 is close to as good as it gets in this sort of game, and if they continue only improving and get out of the bad habit of undoing their own positive additions, they might actually be onto an annual series that's actually worth buying year after year. But if you bought F1 2021 on release, unless you really love the look of the new era of car, it's really not worth buying the upgrade at full price, but picking it up for 30 to 40 bucks is just fine. That's all I have for F1 2022 for now though. Thanks for watching.